from it. Destiny arrives all the same. One day remains at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games as we take a look at beautiful Madison, Wisconsin. Thank you so much for being here today with us as we wrap up competition on Sunday at the CrossFit Games. I am Sean Woodland. We appreciate you joining us here on the Rogue Iron Game, but I am not doing this by myself. We have a packed house here at the desk. Annie Sakamoto, Dan Bailey, and Chase Ingram all joining us. And, and today, I think, as we have seen through the past three days, the, the theme is pressure. It has been pressure all week long on these athletes. I have felt immense amounts of pressure all weekend. I have been on an emotional <laughs> roller coaster all weekend, and I can't tell if I am ready to get off of that roller coaster or, or stay on the roller coaster. I'm ready to stay on. Okay. I want to see how things kind of play out, and I'm also super interested. I would love to know how the athletes are feeling on yeah. Sunday, those top 10 individuals. Yeah, and Jason, you've been on the competition side and the coach side. What are the athletes feeling right now? Uh, you know, it, 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 as Annie described it perfectly, is there is a lot of pressure. We kind of have like a CrossFit Fortnite thing comboing where the competition field's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And, but the cuts are done. So now you have a, a open field of play. There's really no penalty for having a bad finish other than toppling down the leaderboard. So it's just keeping your athletes focused on one event at a time since that's all we really know. And just stay in your lane as the day goes on. Yeah, as is customary at the CrossFit Games, we don't know everything that is going to take place. We have a general idea of what the schedule looks like. We do know where we're going to start. We're going to be in the water. We're going to have those event details coming up in a little bit. The individuals will start with the swim paddle. That's at 10 a.m. local time here. Then an hour later, the teams go. We don't know a whole lot after that. We just know times and locations. We're going to be heading inside the Coliseum for uh, the remainder of the competition. And then we close things out at 5 p.m. Uh, with the closing ceremonies. But I know one thing a lot of people are looking forward to seeing today is will history be made on both the men's and the women's side of things here. Right, and on the women's side, Tia Claire Toomey is poised to be the first three-peat female champion that we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, there's two other ladies that have had back-to-back -back championships in both Catherine David's daughter and Annie Thor's daughter, but we have seen somebody complete their bid for a three-peat. And considering that we are starting the day with a water event, and, and Tia Toomey has won both water events that we've had here in Madison, and just the look that she had in her eyes last night, I say she has this thing on lock. Yeah. And then, of course, Matt Frazier, the second man. Uh, he is poised to be the second man to hold four championship titles. And again, the way he looked on that clean event last night, the fact that we haven't seen him in the white jersey since Friday morning, I think his, he is completely fired up. Yeah. It's almost like the, the two silver medal, uh, excuse me, the two silver medals that he has sitting in his home staring at it. The fact that he's not wearing that white jersey has fueled his fire. It's going to be an amazing day of competition. When fans look at the leaderboard, they, they need to kind of get rid of their old perspective and look at it through a new lens. These leads are not insurmountable because of the amount of points and the gap between each uh, placement that we have here with this 10 person point scale. No, and that's part of what's going to make Sunday so interesting when you take a look at that chart there. First place is still going to get 100 points, but now if you wind up down in 10th, you're only going to get 10. That 90 point gap can make up all sorts of points on the leaderboard. 262 points on the women's side from 10th to 1st, 214 points from 10 to 1st on the men's side. So while that's a massive amount of points, it's not impossible for a 10th place finisher to rise up to the podium and potentially even take a first place spot. There are rookies still alive on both the men's and women's side of things, and some people might say that seems a little weird, but look, this is nothing new. Now the question is, will one of them actually find him or herself on the podium? Right. Since 2010, we have had a rookie on the podium every single year. And look at the names that we're talking about. Rich Froning, champion. Matt Fraser, champion. Tia Claire Toomey, champion. So it, it's no surprise, it would be no surprise to see a rookie be on the podium again this year. 
they would actually just stay in, in step with tradition. There are some rookies in contention here. Uh, who do you, who will you be keeping an eye on to see, hey, you know what, maybe this person keeps the streak alive and winds up on the podium in his first year. Yeah, like we mentioned, nothing's impossible right now at this stage, so we still could see one of these rookies jump to the top. One of the guys I'm looking at is Matt McLeod. He's about 188 points out of first, 107 off the podium. Had a very slow start to the week, taking several 40th place finishes, but has continually improved his scores as we move along. You can see him on the left on the pull-up bar there during Mary. The other athlete that I'm looking at is Haley Adams. We saw her yesterday. She mentioned that she enjoyed swimming and they do it a whole bunch down in Cookville so she's excited that she gets to put some of that on display today for event 10 and then last but not least Anna Fragu sixth place currently 221 points out of first 132 off the podium uh, was able to do fairly well in that clean event there moving into Sunday she needs to make up some points to, in order for her to get up the leaderboard. Chase a question for you and I'll open it up to everybody else but what else here stands out uh, as you look at just these 10 athletes who remain on the leaderboard. A couple of the athletes in there, there's a variable set of skills and talents with all these athletes, and a lot of them are different. So it's going to kind of come down to what the events are going to be. When you have such a drastic change on the point scale on the leaderboard, fifth place used to be 84 points, and now it's only 50. When you have unique skill sets with only 10 athletes, mm -hmm. I would say the specialists can make a dramatic impact on what happens the rest of the day. Yeah, and along those lines, the race for the lead here is on both sides. I mean, it's not done, especially on the men's side. Right, and, and we're looking at Noah Olson being only 15 points ahead of Matt Fraser. So that means he has Matt Fraser breathing down mm -hmm. his neck. We've never seen Matt Fraser not wearing the white jersey going into this third and or excuse me, fourth and final day. But what I've been so impressed with as far as Noah goals is goes is his composure yeah. under all of this pressure. Notoriously, Noah makes some big mistakes and he kind of freaks out about them. You know, to see him, especially on the sprint triplet yesterday to see him have Matt take the lead over yeah. him and him remain composed. He even fell on that final right. pegboard. But what he knew was he just needed to stay in front of BKG in order to hold on to his lead, and that's exactly what he did, even after a failed pegboard attempt. I am so impressed with his mental game yeah. thus far. Let's go to the women's side now and check out the leaderboard where we stand coming into the final day of competition. And Tia Toomey is your overall all-leader. 721 points. She leads Kristen Holta by 85 points, and that is not an insurmountable lead anymore. Jamie Green sits in third place. Carrie Pierce is 27 points back of her for the final spot on the podium. Catherine Davis' daughter, she can still be a factor as well. We're going to get into all of this in a second, but first let's look at the top of the leaderboard where Tia Toomey is on the cusp of history. What are the chances that she could be the first woman to win three CrossFit Games championships? Well, like you were saying, Sean, she's got an 85-point lead over Kristen Holter right now. Uh, and, and as you were pointing out, mathematically, because of the scoring system this year, could she not win? Yes. But is it likely that she's not going to win? No. And if we think about the events that we know thus far today, a water event, Tia will do very well, if not win it. And then we're back in the Coliseum, which usually produces very quintessential CrossFit workouts. Again, events that she'll do very well at. So the combination of her doing well um, and, and or needing others to not mm -hmm. do well is just, it's so unlikely right. that these others won't, will do better than she will or enough better than right. she will at this point. Let's assume that Tia Toomey, if she doesn't win, is probably going to finish on the podium. Who, who else do you think is a lock to be in that top three? I think Kristen Holte at this point, her body of work over the years at the CrossFit Games and where she currently sits is super impressive. She's one of the most consistent athletes we've ever seen. One of the things that I don't like for today is she's a little questionable on swim events. From 2014 to 2016, we're looking at 7th, 10th, and a 21st place finish in anything that kind of involves swimming and paddling. So not the best thing to come out of the hopper for her this morning. However, she is one of the most consistent athletes, and after interviewing, interviewing her yesterday, she seems very calm, very cool, very collected. She knows what she has to do, knows that she has to run her own race, and the only part of that that I kind of disagree with is we're at Sunday at this point. It's not about running your own race anymore. Yeah. She has got to keep her eyes on Tia Toomey if she wants any chance to pass her on the leaderboard. Chase, who do you think could wind up there with, with let's say, Toomey and Holter are going to be there? Who's the third, possibly? I say the one sitting in third place currently, yeah. which is Jamie Green. and. 
We haven't said too much about her, but she has been just as consistent as the other athletes. The only thing, she had a couple of finishes outside the top 20. But for Jamie Green, she's been inside the top six her last four events. And I think people forget is like, this is an athlete who won the Open two years ago. She was also on a team that podiumed at the CrossFit Games to CrossFit Mayhem. So Jamie Green has a lot of competitive experience on final day of competition where the pressure is the highest. So I'd like to see what Jamie Green does with the events today. There are some women who may not be in realistic contention for a spot on the podium. Mathematically, pretty much everybody is still alive. But who could be a bit of an X factor here today? Well, on the women's side, I'm going to have to go with Amanda Barnhart, especially when we look at the first event today. We start in the water. Amanda Barnhart is a D1 collegiate swimmer from Cleveland State, and specifically in freestyle. And, and knowing that we have a long swim event coming up, it really favors her. If we see another heavy barbell like we did last night, again, this is a woman who may not make the podium, but can very likely take points away from the other ladies right. that are in, in a true race for the podium and help shape take up the leaderboard overall. Yeah, look, Katrin Davis' daughter, it's not out of the realm of possibility that she could be the first woman to win three CrossFit Games championships. She could be a, a little bit of a monkey wrench here too. Yeah, absolutely. That name has to just jump out at mm -hmm. you for sure, even though it's not where we're used to seeing it. Um, she's made that cut into the top 10 and then has slowly kind of climbed her way up the leaderboard, although she's 187 points out of first. Um, she has the experience of a champion, right? She's been there before. Um, she's been in pressure cooker situations, so this isn't something that's unfamiliar to her. She's trained for this type of scenario. Doesn't have many top 10 finishes in swim events, but the fact that she's had so much experience over these past CrossFit games, definitely somebody who can creep up onto the podium for sure, possibly take the lead with the way the points work. Chase, on the women's side, who's the fly in the ointment here right now? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Uh, no offense to the fly in the ointment, but I, I like to see what Anna Frago does today. We, yeah. we, she's been consistent in her own way in terms of never really a dominating performance, but never really a bad one. And the way the points kind of work out is that if she has a couple good events, she can disrupt things, at least on the top of the leaderboards concerned for maybe you know, I don't see her cracking the top three, and that's just my opinion, but I see her could be making a difference for athletes like Katrin Davis' yeah, daughter and Carrie right. Pierce trying to work their way back up into the podium. Yeah. Let's go over to the men's side, check out the leaderboard there where it is much closer at the top for the first time in what seems like forever. Noah Olson is your overall leader by 15 points over Matt Fraser. Bjorn Carl Gumanson, he sits in third, but he's only three points up on Scott Panchik for that final spot on the podium. And then James Newbery and Jacob Hepner are behind them in the top six. There are a couple races here. There is the race for first. Noah Olson and Matt Fraser have separated themselves. And then there's a race uh, for the podium. Let's talk about the race for first. Who has the edge? Right now, I think it's anybody's game. I would okay. definitely say that Matt Frazier might have a little bit of edge based on the fact of the championships that he's won. We've seen flashes of brilliance from Noah Olson before. We've seen him approach the top of the leaderboard, and he's definitely showed up some of those uh, weaknesses he had before, like he's doing better in things like this. The sprint event here, we said he finished very well in that event. Historically, has not been very good. The thing that we haven't seen him do is put together a complete weekend. In event seven, you can see Matt Frazier there actually climbing the pegboard. Matt was able to take a victory after Noah failed a pegboard. His, his uh, handle just popped out and he fell down, had to do an entire rep again. That cost him big points. Frazier hasn't been this, it hasn't been this close on day three since 2015. Matt Frazier's now back in that position he was back then, battling out with Ben Smith, mm -hmm. where he actually lost to Ben Smith. Obviously, he's a different athlete than he was back then. Um, Olsen has, although he's a uh, very good swimmer, right. has a water polo background, Matt has actually bested him in the water in several events in the past, so I'm looking for this event to be very close between those two. All right, let's assume that those two are probably going to take first or second in whatever order. Uh, there are only three points that separate Bjorn from Gubinson from Scott Panchik. Who has the edge now in that race for third? Well, BKG, I would say, has mm. the edge, but like you said, only by three points, yeah. and this is a competition that can shift very quickly within one event. You see uh, BKG was in that race in the sprint triplet with Noah Olsen, and it was little things like putting the dumbbell down uh, that where, where Noah 
Noel Olsen was able to edge him out. BKG in the front of our screen right here with the red tank top on. We're talking about a gentleman, though, that not only got third place in 2015, he's been in the top 10 in the last three years. He has an average placement of 14 across 66 events. This is a man who knows how to handle himself under pressure, but he's got Scott Panchik only three points behind him. Again, another, you know, top 10 finisher, I think six of the last seven years. So he, there are no mistakes for BKG right. today. All right, let's talk now X factors again. And I'll, I want to start with you, Chase, but there are some men who, again, mathematically still alive here, but may not re be realistically still alive to get on the podium, who uh, might be able to disrupt some things today. Uh, you, I, your best athlete out there to, to play that card is Jacob Hepner. Just the fact that you know, he's back at the games for the first time in the last two years that he's missed, but the way this guy trains is manic at the best way I can describe it. He has such a skill set that most athletes maybe don't have. His is just putting it all together. So depending on what the events are on Sunday, I think Jacob Hepner has a very good chance to disrupt things and even crack the top three just being 80 points out. Dan, how about you? Who do you, who do you think is uh, looking to, to just throw a grenade into this. <laughs> oh my God. James Newberry yeah. in that first event's going to play very well for him in 2018. He finished third in the Madison Tri Plus. You can see him as the athlete closest to us on the screen. There he is finishing uh, event seven from last night, doing very well there, keeping himself in contention. He was also fifth on the run swim run in 2017, hit a 345 pound clean last night, which gave him 40 pounds. And based on the stats we had for him, that was a 10 pound PR. So he's showing up on the days and on the events that he needs to to put himself in contention to be on the podium or possibly take the leader spot. Yeah, Michelle Atondra has really made a big difference with James Newberry. He looks like an entirely different athlete and on track for his best career finish here at the CrossFit Games. Let's go to the team competition. And this was the one that we all thought was going to be a slugfest. It is not. They have freedom. <laughs> And they're gone. They are running away <laughs> with this thing. 635 points. They are 157 points up on CrossFit Krypton. The Central Beast, OC3 Black, Don't Stop. They are still in contention for a spot on the podium. There is another cut. Don't Stop, Invictus, and Invictus X are separated by just three points. We're going to get down to five teams. So what, a couple of those teams might not be making it. Who do you like, Dan, to be moving on now to the next round? I'm keeping my eye on Team Don't Stop. They're currently in fifth with a third place finish at the end of the day yesterday. So they're coming into Sunday with a little bit of momentum. Really, we're starting to compete for, like you mentioned, kind of the podium spot, second and third and down. Historically, they took a 38th place finish in the, in the team tri plus from last year. But Chase, you mentioned they actually made a change to their team, which could affect the outcome in their water today. Yeah, they had Rachel Garibay on their team last year, and she all, practically almost didn't know how to swim, so they had to actually <laughs> coast her through it. So they've replaced some team members, although with Roy Gamboa and Travis William at the helms, I would say two more of the uh, more rocks than floaters, I would say, <laughs> between the two men. So we'll have to see how they handle the new, the new, the new uh, system. A couple of Invictus teams were in that battle. Who do you like between the two of them? I'm going to go with the underdog here, the team that's in right. seventh place. But again, like you said, only three points out. Uh, and they are also last year's second place team. Now, only the gentlemen from that team remain in Sam Dancer and, uh, Reth and Holden Rethwell. But look at the two ladies that they put on that team, Margot Alvarez and Christy Aramo. I mean, that bodes really well for them, I think, especially going into this water event. They got seventh place in the team triplets last year. You add you add somebody like Christy Aramo into that mm -hmm. roster when we're going into the water, it's fantastic. And then Margot Alvarez, why she hasn't always been the best at swimming events, she's never been the worst. So uh, I think if we're talking about a cut and we're talking about a water event, this team stands a really good chance to make the move they need to and get in that fifth place position. All right, let's assume the Mayhem Freedom is going to win this thing. I don't think I'm going out on a, too far of a limb there. Two spots remain on the podium. You have spots two through four separated by just 52 points, which again is not a big margin, especially when we get down to five and there are 25 points between each spot. So who do you like to join them on the podium? 
Don't you make fun of me, Sean. Okay, here we go. I, I know what's with coming. Those C3 here we go. It's that back. Yeah. 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 I back off. We are back off. Right. Andy is on the band. I, I, I never got off. I just, act, I just pulled the train for a stop okay. and then decided not to get off. Uh, OC3 Black, you know, they were last year's third place team and they returned three of those members from last year. And outside of a poor start and their sprint relay yesterday, they have otherwise just been steadily climbing their way back up the leaderboard. And they've been doing that by capitalizing on events that have faced that favor them, uh, like that the the uh, cheese curd event that we saw yeah, yesterday. Big chipper. Yes, it's yeah. a big chipper. Thank you. Um, and they were ninth in the tripl the triplets event last year. So, again, a team that I think has been steadily doing exactly what they need to do. They're showing that their experience uh, and their unification as a team is really paying off. Dan, who kept the OC3? Because squarely back on the bandwagon right <laughs> since she's driving that thing and Anne is now the, the passenger seat. Yeah. Who else could be up there as well? Uh, definitely Team Krypton. I think okay. we saw from yesterday they've, they've been the only team to actually really put any pressure on Mayhem. Um, in the big chipper, they kind of took a stumble a little bit, uh, took a ninth, only got four points. It was kind of their damage control event. The GHD sit-ups and deadlifts didn't play well to their favor. Speaking with them yesterday, though, they are incredibly confident in the water, uh, excited to see the swim and the paddle. Uh, they're going to need to be because we're running out of events to catch CrossFit mm -hmm. Mayhem and running out of events to kind of solidify your spot on the top of the leaderboard. Uh, ideally, they're looking for some more gymnastic events to come out, but overall, very well-rounded team, have a lot of talent, and they're slowly working better as a team kind of mm -hmm. as we go along through the weekend. Chase, all the talk coming into this team competition was it's going to be a slugfest. All these teams are loaded. You can make a legitimate case for all of them to win this thing. We could not have been more wrong about that. I know we don't have as big a field as we have in the past, but we probably have as deep a field as we have ever had in the team competition. Is this the most dominant team performance that we have ever seen? I think unquestionably, yes. And because of the hype that we had, we had the air of the super teams. You didn't have the train together, you can put them all together any which way you wanted to. And look at what CrossFit Mayhem is doing to the most stacked field of teams we have ever seen assembled at the CrossFit Games. I don't think it's a question, it's not up for debate. What Rich Froning has done with CrossFit Mayhem's team this year, under all the scrutiny of way the offseason was, what happened at Wadapalooza, you know, they went to Asia to get their win, they got beat at the Rogue Invitational, but what Mayhem has done and what they have been, showed us is not only are they dominant, they've started to show the blueprint about what it takes. It takes a level of team commitment and training that most people don't have the chance to do or aren't willing to do. This is, the, this is by far the most dominant team we have ever seen. Yeah, and Dan, you've been down there, and we've talked about this a couple days ago, about what their training looks like. I mean, it is all they do. Correct, eat, train, yeah. eat, train, sleep, repeat. That's kind mm -hmm. of the... Uh, mantra down there and they do everything together like yeah. uh, everything is always uh, some kind of team workout working together the experience that that garners when you're out on the floor approached with the unknowable the chances of you knowing what your teammates can do and cannot do where everybody needs to pick up their slack and how to stick together on different implements is just greater it's it, they really set the bar for how you're going to need to train in the future if you want to have mm -hmm. a successful team at the CrossFit Games maybe not just successful but a chance at the podium and for sure a chance to win yeah and, and you've mentioned this before the chemistry there is so important they seem to have it more than any other team right if you follow these guys on Instagram or, or you have any connection into the mayhem world they eat together they're always hanging out at the frownings there's this family vibe that is created and I think you know it's not just physically what you can do on the field it's as a team how can you work together and the fact that that these guys are, are not just training together they're eating together they're watching TV together whatever it is there's just a, a bond that's formed that's um, untouchable yeah well, the teams are going to go second today the individuals kick things off first. This is the event they're going to be facing. It's pretty simple. It's a 1,000-meter swim and then a 1,000-meter paddle. The paddle is a prone paddle, and the time cap uh, is 50 minutes. So who is jumping for joy now that he or she gets to do this event? <laughs> From some of the things that we've seen in the sanctional events earlier this year, Matt McLeod is going to be my pick for that. He's got two seconds and two firsts over the course of competing in any swim event and sanctionals. So look for him to do very well there. Uh, he, he's on the left side of your screen there doing the pull-ups in Mary. Had a bit of a slow start to the week. 40th, 44th, and 18th were his first 
three event place finishes. He proved he has some capacity on the land. He did well in the, or took first in that sprint sled couplet. So I'm interested to see how he's going to shake up that leaderboard once we hit the water this morning. Yeah, who do you like on the women's side? On the women's side, Amanda Barnhart is frothing at the bit <laughs> to get into the water this morning. Uh, you know, again, we're talking about a D1 collegiate freestyle swimmer. She had a very promising rookie debut at the CrossFit, the Reebok uh, CrossFit Games in 2018. She finished 15th. And it's just so great to see her following up by being in the top 10. But besides that, this is a longer distance swim, the longest distance swim that we've seen yeah. thus far. And I'm sure Chase would agree that the longer we go, the more ability she's going to be able to create an exponential lead on these other ladies. And that doesn't just go for the time, but for in the energy that she's going to have saved in swimming such a long distance and then going into the paddle. So I, I think she's really excited about yeah. this event. Yeah, Chase, why is that that 1,000 meter swim? It's such a big factor here in this event. Well, you think about it, how long it actually takes to do. Mm -hmm. And so for a thousand meter swim, you're looking somewhere for people who are okay at swimming. It's going to take north of two minutes to do when you think about a thousand meter swim. A thousand meter paddle, maybe half the amount of time. So the time difference between the two is that if you can bank on the swim, what Amanda Barnhart's benefit is, is that she could do a thousand meter swim with her background as easy and as comfortably as possible and still be minutes ahead of the rest of the field. So there's not enough time on the thousand meter paddle side to make up such a deficit because it takes so much time to swim that distance. All right, let's take one more look at the schedule of events that we have on tap for today and some of it, the details I should say, are known. Again, we're going to start with the individuals. That goes here in just about five minutes as the individual get, individuals get things kicked off with the swim paddle. An hour later, it's the team swim paddle. Then we come back at 1 o'clock for we don't know. But there will be competition. Uh, we're going to close things out at 5 p.m. here local time. If you are here in Madison and you don't want the fun to end once you leave the campus at the Alliant Energy Center, you can go to any of the Great Dane pub and brewing locations. Today is the last day. All four of their locations have daily drink specials, custom Rogue food menus, and exclusive Rogue and Great Dane t-shirts. and pint cups, so grab a hold of one of those and watch the Iron Game as we cover the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. And for more information, you can follow Rogue Fitness at roguefitness.com uh, on Instagram. Really fast, one thing you're looking forward to seeing today. We'll start with Annie. Well, I was saying earlier, this day is always so bittersweet to me. Last night we were saying, um, you know, oh, only one more day, only one more day and a little tear trickled down my face because <laughs> yes, we get to see who's going to be crowned fittest on earth, but I, I love this stuff. I could yeah. sit here for another three days and keep watching. So uh, I, I guess I'm most excited to see who ends up with that crown on their head. Yeah. We're joining the CrossFit World Feed while we talk here as they get set for the uh, the swim paddle. But Dan, what are you looking forward to? I'm going to break here? the rules. I'm going to go with two things. Oh, okay. Ooh, uh, why not? You're Dan one, Bailey. Obviously, <laughs> the athletes are one thing to watch, but I'm, I'm really interested to see how these cuts and how the point system is really going to shake up the leaderboard when they start competing. And the other thing I don't think we've brought up is this is the first time, I believe, that a swim event has been later in oh, the yeah, weekend. Oh, so the latest we've had yeah. it, absolutely. Right? So now the athletes have been through all sorts of different events, and now they have to jump into the water. How's that going to affect athletes, like you mentioned, Chase, who maybe aren't already very good at swimming? They're OK swimmers. What's that going to do to their capacity in the water? So I'm excited to see that for event one this morning. Yeah, go ahead, Chase. So for me, it's we talked about Noah's mentality a lot, and question, question, question. I feel like we did the same thing with Lucas Hogberg. When is Hogberg going to fail yeah. last year? Maybe, just maybe, Noah has it all together for the first time. And I'm excited to see how he handles this. And maybe the questions stop, and he can start giving us some answers coming into the final day of competition. And we now join the CrossFit World Feed, the pictures that they are bringing us that we can provide to you of event number nine for the individuals at Swim Paddle. We are back out at Lake Monona. And as Dan Bailey mentioned, this is the latest ever in a CrossFit Games competition that we have been in the water. The men are going to start things off first. One more look at the overall standings for them, where Noah Olson comes in 15 points up on Matt Fraser. Bjorgren, Carl Gumanson, three points up on Scott Panchik for that third and final spot on the podium. James Newbury, Jacob Hepner, Adrian Moonweiler, and then Matt McLeod followed by Saxon Panchik and Will Morad. And I know those look like big deficits, but today, Nothing is out of the realm of possibility. Women's overall standings. Tia Claire Toomey, 85 points up on Kristen Holta. And then it's Jamie Green who leads Carrie Pierce by 27 points. 
Catherine Davies' daughter, she's sitting there in fifth. She could be a factor today, and then the rookie, Anna Fraggy, who's trying to get herself onto the podium. The event, a 1,000-meter swim, and then a 1,000-meter paddle. The score is the sum of each athlete's time on the swim and then on the paddle. So it's total time for your total score. And those paddle boards look very familiar, and all 20 athletes will be going at the same time. And I think it's important to note, Sean, that for the less efficient swimmers that maybe don't know how to kick as well, the energy that they're going to expend in the shoulders during the swim is really going to affect their ability to paddle directly afterwards. Another thing about that prone paddleboard when they get on it, it's not a stable implement to no, deal with. No, it isn't. Any rocking left to right it can eventually tip you over and roll, roll into the water, right? So I think I saw a, a little video clip of the old Dan Bailey <laughs> doing that himself at the games one year. Did you fall in the drink, Dan? I took a, I surfed a wave on the way in and sang to Ben Smith on the way back as well. <laughs> we were halfway there and might have thrown a Bon Jovi line out. All right, we are underway on the start of the swim. And Chase, you know a lot about this, but this kind of mass start, I mean, this is chaos right here. This is chaos and it's also very violent. When you're in the water, there's kicking, there's grabbing, there's elbows, because nobody really cares. It's different than a mass start on a run where you know people can see what you're doing. But when it comes to the water, it's super important to try to get ahead early. I would put mass start into quotation since it's only 20 athletes coming in, both men and women. But if you can't, if you don't know what you're doing, it becomes very daunting. Like you take one kick to the face and that just might be the end of your event. And the Australians are out front early. The men will be wearing the dark caps. The women are wearing the light caps. And it's Matt McLeod and Tia Toomey who are out front on this 1,000 meter swim. They have to go out and around and then back and then they will pick up their paddles and then they will navigate the same course. 2,000 total meters, 1,000 swim, 1,000 on the paddleboard. Ninth event here to kick off Day number four, the final day of competition at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. The numbers they are wearing on their swim caps correspond with their placement on the overall leaderboard. 74 degrees, it's a beautiful day here in Madison, Wisconsin. Great day for a water event. It is a great day, because if you look at how calm the water is with no wind, uh, that's really going to help a lot of these athletes, because a part of open water swimming is being able to spot the target or your, your turnaround point, right? And so if, every time you pick up your head and swallow a chunk of water, over a thousand meters, that's going to be a big belly full of water. And Chase, end. you mentioned, or well, to your point of the glassy water, how important it is it to get out in front being a part of that glassy water, being able to swim into that uh, fresh, clean uh, water rather than being in the chop being created by people who are in the front. It's two folds and I feel like it depends on your skill level as a swimmer. If you're a great swimmer, it's vital. Clean water, no one's in your face, you can just sight on your own. If you're a bad swimmer, you actually want to try to tail off on mm -hmm. somebody who's a, a better swimmer than you. Because if you can park behind someone, A, that knows how to sight better than you, and exactly. that just means they can look where they're going, because that's a hard skill to do in open water. But two, drafting in the water is so, has such a massive positive effect. If you can tail on someone's toes and just follow those, it's a good place to be if you're not the strongest swimmer in the world. Well, and that'll actually be true on the paddleboard as well. You can very much draft on a paddleboard, but it's doubtful a lot of these folks know how to do that. The Australians continue to lead. It's Matt McLeod, number eight, in the dark swim cap. Next to him is Tia Toomey in the light swim cap. Again, the numbers that they are wearing on their caps correspond with where they stand on the overall leaderboard. Men and women competing at the same time, but not against each other. They will be scored separately. The thing that I'm interested in seeing once they come in from this swim, on that narrow paddleboard, paddleboard, there's really two techniques that you can use. One, you can be laying on your belly, paddling like normal, hopefully that you're not gonna fall off just using your arms. The other is a uh, paddling from your knees. Right. So when you're able to do that, you're actually able to activate more core to extremity movement. You're able to use your midline to kind of push your arms through the water. It is a way faster method to move through the water. In 2015, I remember Con Porter doing that as he passed me at great speed <laughs> on the paddleboard. So, the Australians are out in front now. I'm wondering if any of them are going to be able to hop on that paddleboard, use that technique yeah, to further li their lead. Why is that technique so hard? Oh, because the, of balance. the balance. Yeah. The balance. Yeah. That very narrow paddleboard, any movement to the left or the right will roll you right into the water. Mm -hmm. 
Right. I'm actually uh, very impressed that Tia right now has such a huge lead on Amanda Barnhart. I don't know if that's uh, Amanda playing a specific um, a game right now or if Tia is just really that good of a swimmer. When you look at Tia, the difference between Tia and Matt McLeod is that Tia has a very short stroke in terms of her arms coming out of the water. She'll enter just in front of her face, but she has a good reach where you see Matt McLeod just below her. He has a much longer stroke. And so what you see between the two is that Matt has a much more comfortable, long technique stroke, which is very beneficial for something like a thousand meter. Tia is just strong. You can see the power that she has. So yes, she's in the lead, but she is working a lot harder than I would say Matt. Now they're not competing against each other, but we said earlier is how important it is on the thousand meter swim in terms of time it takes to do the event. A thousand meters upwards of 20 minutes, probably more towards 25 for most of these athletes because of the distance. Now if it's a legit thousand, we've heard, we've seen distances yeah. in the past where it's like, it was a 500 meter, I was like, they didn't break the world record. If that, was, <laughs> that was 300. But it's going to take twice as long as the paddleboard event will do. And if you can put distance between them and what these two athletes, especially Matt McLeod, is that he's going to finish this event comfortably on the first half of the swim. Because if you're a swimmer, it's, it's the difference between, I was, I'll put myself, me doing an Olympic lift versus an Olympian, right? Mm -hmm. I can do it, it looks like Olymp you know, it right. looks like the snatch, but then there, that's the night and day difference. If right. you are a swimmer and you have a swimming background, not just you practice it, you can do this thousand as almost active recovery and be minutes ahead of the rest of the field. And there's not enough time to catch you on a paddleboard. This is the pack behind McLeod and Toomey as they are on the first the trip out, I should say, on this initial 1,000 meter swim. They have to go around that buoy and then back and then they'll get their paddle boards. But things are certainly sort of started to separate out here on this initial 500 meters out. And Chase, there was a time not that long ago where you would, it was almost comical when you would watch cross hitters try to swim. And if you were just just basically proficient at moving through the water, you could smash these events. Yeah. What are you trying to say, <laughs> Sean? <laughs> it, Present company not included. I, I liken it to the weightlift, the weightlifting community watching us all do Amanda in 2010. Right. <laughs> just we can totally, do it. totally pooping on the snatch. Right? <laughs> and when you look back, myself included in that, and what we saw in 11, 12, and watching people how to swim, it was like trying to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger swim in Predator. Yeah. It was like, actually, you know what, he did a pretty good job. <laughs> um, but the training that they have put in and understanding is that swimming is such a foreign movement to do. Yeah. You can fake a run, you can fake a bike, you cannot fake a swim. Yeah. It requires a lot of training, and athletes have been living in the pool since this has been involved, and they know it's been in the games every year, and it should be here to stay as a good test. And so it is nice to see good swimming out on the, on the lake. But you bring up, Chase, they've been, a lot of these athletes have been swimming in a pool. Swimming in a pool with a lane line to track is wildly different than swimming open water. Right, so when you when you open water swim, like Chase was saying, you have to sight, you have to pick something so you don't end up just zigzagging all over Lake Monona. Uh, and these athletes obviously have that huge orange buoy to use as their sight where every couple of strokes, you pick your head up and you make sure you're on track. But if you're used to just following a lane line and waiting for the wall, open water swimming is gonna really catch you by surprise. Well, Tia Toomey and Matt McLeod are getting set to make the turn back to shore on the second half of this 1,000 meter swim. Toomey's in the white, Matt McLeod is in the left, and the two Australians are way out in front here. Remember, men and women are competing together, but they're scored separately. Now, I was talking earlier about how long it'll take for an okay swimmer about, if you can hold a two minute, 100 meter pace, you are a good swimmer. Right. You're capable, I'll say you're a capable swimmer. You're not a good swimmer. That's actually not that good. Um, you're a capable swimmer. If you are a good swimmer, holding a 130 pace for 100 meters is not hard to do mm -hmm. at all. And that's a five minute difference between you and a good swimmer. You think about that. Well, Tumi McLeod made the turn around the eight minute mark. 
So uh, this likely, this, the, the, likely that this isn't quite a thousand meter swim. To me, it, it looks a little bit shorter. But regardless, this is the longest swim we've seen in the CrossFit Games thus far. Toomey and McLeod, left of your screen. Toomey is in the white swim cap. McLeod is in the dark swim cap. And these are the athletes who are behind them. And it's hard to pick out numbers on the swim caps, but once we do, we'll try and identify them. That could be Noah Olson. That is Noah Olson. Noah Olson in second place right now. AC Noah, he has a very, very short, choppy stroke, and that works in water polo. You know, when right. you have head up uh -huh. and you have right. short, choppy movement. When we're talking about open water swimming, you need length and you need technique. And so Noah, though he's in a good position with the field, he's working extremely hard. And we got to remember, it's like we still have a thousand meter paddleboard right. after this. I said it's not going to take us long, but it is in no means easy. Yeah. No Olsen second place for the men behind Matt McLeod as he has now made the turn back. I believe that's Amanda Barnhart in the white swim cap, so she's in second, a distant second behind Tia Toomey. The one thing about open water swimming and swimming in general, it's not like going for a long run. I think a lot of times if you're running about, you know, say like a 5K or even a, a you know, two miles is that you can start at a certain pace and you actually can feel better as the, right. the run goes on, even biking to a certain extent. That doesn't happen in swimming. It gets harder and harder and harder because when you get fatigued on a run, you can just kind of, you know, back the pace off and slow down a little bit. You can stop pedaling on a bike. When you're in the water, there is no stop. And if you go slower, it just makes it harder. So that's the challenging part about swimming is that the difficulty of the distance increases as you go. So you can reach the halfway point. No one's going to sit here and negative split, which just means go faster on the second half right. than the first half. It's going to get exponentially harder as they get closer to shore. Well, and wouldn't you say that a lot of that comes down to the breathing? If you're jogging, you, you can more readily control your breath than if you're swimming. With swimming, there is an inherent holding your breath, right, which is counterintuitive to most of us as we start to get more taxed. Tia Tui and Matt McLeod are your leaders. After this, it's that 1,000 meter paddle. Amanda Barnhart sits in second place behind Tia Tumi. So if this holds, and we still have a long way to go in this event, but Tumi can put even more distance between herself and Kristen Holta. We don't know where Kristen Holta is in that pack, but uh, Tia Tumi came in uh, with, a, with an 85 point lead over Kristen Holta. And if she can get Amanda Barnhart between the two of them, she can pick up 20 points. Well, and this also bodes really well for Tia Claire Toomey because as we saw last year, she was one of the few, few female athletes that was able to knee paddle that prone paddle board. And so assuming that she comes in a good distance ahead of Amanda Barnhart, for her to have that lead on the board has got to be a big confidence booster for Tia. About 12 minutes, 30 seconds unofficially. Uh, into the race here. And, and I think it's very deceiving when you look at distance in the water versus what you would uh, approach distance on land is that it looks like about a 50 meter gap between your two leaders and your second and third place or third and fourth place. That's a minute. Right. That's a minute time frame they have right. on these athletes. We're hearing that Matt Fraser is starting to challenge Noah Olson now for second behind Matt McLeod. So Matt Fraser working his way up on Noah Olson, and that's huge for Fraser. But if he only beats Olson by one spot, he still won't overtake him for the overall lead. He'll be five points back. But right now, uh, Matt Fraser challenging Noah Olson for second place behind Matt McLeod. This is definitely something where Noah needs to fight for these points. This is something that he, kind of a wheelhouse event for him, something he's very good at. If there's anything we know about Matt, once we get back into the Coliseum, any indoor arena, mm -hmm. he seems to be incredibly dominant inside of there with borderline being untouchable over the years. So Noah needs to pick up as many points as he can in this swim event and push, not just let Matt kind of cruise in front of him and think, oh, it's okay, I'll still have the lead after this event. Mm -hmm. 
There is. It's Adrian Moonbiler on number seven. So he's back. That was Noah Olsen, so the seven and the one looking a lot alike, but that's Noah Olsen. And uh, he is basically all by himself in second place. So he's held off Matt Fraser and still sits in second behind Matt McLeod. Matt McLeod is in the dark swim cap on the left of your screen. Next to him, Tia Toomey, who is in first place for the women. And look at the distance they're putting on the rest of the field. And the same, here's the, the benefit, there's where you see the sign of a, a, a good swimmer, a true swimmer, is that what does their stroke look like in the beginning of the race and what does their stroke look like at the end of the race? And what you see on Matt McLeod on the left, he still has a nice, good reach. He still breathes to one side the entire time and there's actually nothing wrong with that. A lot of things with distance swimming is that you want to find yourself in a rhythm, whether that's two breaths or two strokes of breath or three, is that he finds a nice rhythm, you kind of settle into that, and when you have the ability to swim, and T is the same way, she doesn't have the cleanest technique in the world when it charges a stroke length for her upper body, but she's so efficient under the water. It's just something we can't actually see her do, and she's so strong. So Tia, with that having experience plus a little bit of, I mean, sprinkle a little bit of fitness in there, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can handle yourself pretty well in the water. And it's been interesting to see her and Matt kind of stick together. I, I wonder if, um, you know, it was almost more comfortable for them to almost just stay side by side throughout the whole swim. Again, they're not racing each other for a spot here. So in, in a lot of ways, they might have just settled into that togetherness. Unofficially, 15 minutes, 40 seconds have gone by uh, in this event. This is the 1,000 meter swim, the opening portion of this two-part event. The next part, the 1,000 meter paddle. There's a 50-minute time cap here in this event. Tia Toomey on the right, Matt McLeod on the left. They are your leaders. And if you can see in the background, all the athletes scattered across the water, and that just shows you how difficult it is to look where you're going right. while you're swimming. If you see traditional open water races, it's just a single file line mm -hmm. down the length of the lake. And that is the most unique part of open water swimming as athletes are unaware of if they train traditionally in a pool. Yep. Matt McLeod and Tia Toomey getting set to come out of the water here at Lake Monona and they will grab their paddle boards and they will get right back in and traverse the same course. So Toomey is out, McLeod is out. I'm really excited to see Matt McLeod on the paddleboard. It says that he actually has a surf rescue background. So that means, in theory, he should be very proficient at this. These things first showed up in 2015. This is now, I think, the third time that they've been used at the CrossFit Games. Uh, Toomey's off, and McLeod is off. Now Toomey right to her knees and starts to paddle. We'll see if McLeod does the same thing. And there's a perfect example of the difference between the swim pace and the paddle pace. It looks like there's a little motor right. underneath the boats that right. they have going on on the right side of the screen. That's why it was so imperative to get ahead on the swim because the time domain is so much shorter for the paddle. You know, the other thing that knee paddling can do, I, I don't know if you've ever gone surfing or done any sort of paddling, but paddling for any distance I know this sounds funny, but just holding your head up, right, so that you can look becomes extremely tiring on your neck and your shoulders. Uh, so the ability to knee paddle really can save a lot of trap, neck, uh, and shoulder fatigue. Tia Toomey on the right and Matt McLeod on the left, and Amanda Barnhart is getting set to come out of the water. Around the 18 minute mark here unofficially, that duck is not in the competition. <laughs> He's a judge. But has the best seat in the house. <laughs> He's watching for no reps as they come in. <laughs> so Amanda Barnhart is out of the water. 18 minutes, 15 seconds. She sits in second place in this event. Seventh place overall coming in. Now that's here a, comes that's Noah a, Olson. That's a solid 1,000 meter course, right? right? That, that is a legit 1,000. 18 something, Tia and McLeod around on 16. Barnhart was actually a minute and 40 seconds behind her. The distance the, didn't look that far. Olson, Bethany Shadburn, James Newberry coming out. There's Bjorvin Gumanson, so we have yet to see Matt Fraser.
Jamie Green. And I think that was Kristen Holter that we just saw on the left as well. But no one's catching these two. There's Matt McLeod actually putting me to shame as I said that the knee paddle would be obviously faster. He's <laughs> overtaken Tia Toomey laying on his stomach. But when, it does look like Tia is actually possibly drafting off correct. of Matt McLeod right there. Correct. Work smarter, not harder in this event if you can. Right, and I don't know if you saw, but Matt was originally in the lead. And, and they here's could Matt be... Fraser coming out of the water. So he is way back in the pack here. Saxon Panchik got out before him. Matt, Fraser with some ground to make up. Matt and Tia could even be sh doing a little shift on who's going to draft off of who. In, in typical paddle races, my husband has actually done some prone paddle racing, there is an etiquette where you can actually draft off of each other and each person switches who takes the lead and the others draft off of them. Could be what's happening between Matt and Tia right now. Craig Fraser back into the water with the paddleboard and he has a lot of ground to make up on the pack. About four or five men got out of the water ahead of him. Correct me if I'm wrong, Annie, if we're looking at people laying down on the paddleboard, we want to see them with those feet kept tight on yep. the back of the paddleboard, nothing dragging in the water back behind them. Exactly. And, and kind of the more traditional right arm, left arm paddle is much more efficient than the kind of two swing paddle that most of these females are doing right here. And I think one thing you'll see the true guys, they'll kind of alternate their feet yeah. in the air, right? Yes, you you see the cloud in the it, yeah. front is that right hand goes in, left foot goes yep. up, and that little balance on the board. That's exactly what that is. That that tends to help balance the board. Here are your leaders, Matt McLeod for the men, Tia Toomey for the women. And there is no one within shouting distance of them. Now Kristen Holta is out. So Tia Toomey is looking to put significant distance between herself and Kristen Holta in the overall standings. McLeod and Toomey, meanwhile, as Holta gets out of the water, have made the turn. 21 minutes have gone by here. So Noah Olson is in the yellow. He's on the yellow paddleboard in the upper right. I think behind him is James Newberry, who's going to the knee paddle. That was Will Morad who just got out of the water for the men. As still more athletes are finishing up this 1,000 meter swim. That is Catherine David's daughter. Oh. Fifth place overall coming into this event and towards the back of the pack here after the 1,000 meter swim. We haven't said Carrie Pierce's name either. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jacob Hepner coming out in the, the water and there it is. Terry Pierce. Pierce. She heard us so, talking about her. Once again, I said this yesterday. Don't get too attached to any of these leaderboards because they are going to change event after event. Scott, Scott Panchik. Now Scott Panchik is out. Back to your leaders, Matt McLeod and Tia Toomey. They seem to be almost chatting with yeah. each other, possibly right here. About what they had for breakfast. Yep. <laughs> they they yeah. could probably have a float, a nice, you know, pina colada, coffee. and just enjoy their their trip back just in here. Kind of pick your hands up and see if you can ride it all the way in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah, no reason for for Matt McLeod to to exert himself more than he needs here. There's not another heat. He's going to win the event. It would be a second event win of the competition so far. That's actually a massive advantage moving into the rest of the day mm -hmm. because what a thousand meter swim does yeah. to you physically in terms of exhaustion. Yeah. Right? You do a thousand meter open water swim only. When you're done, you're depleted. There's just something about swimming. It's, it's four times more just exhausting than other events. And then you toss on another thousand meter paddle. Uh, you know, Dan, you've done both back to back. The paddle after the swim. Oh, it's devastating on your shoulders, your arms, everything. I mean, you know, most of the athletes aren't going to have a whole lot of exposure to this. If they've known their history, they should find some way before coming to the event to get out on the paddleboard. But it taxes your upper body in just a different way than swimming does alone. Tia Toomey and Matt McLeod are just demolishing this Demol right now. I think, I think the next. Uh, female male competitors have just barely rounded that buoy out there. I want to thank CrossFit for pro providing us with the world feed here as we get to enjoy event number nine of the individual competition, the first of we don't know how many events.
to close out the final day of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. So McLeod and Toomey. Heading to shore. And this will be the fourth event win for Tia Toomey. She's only finished outside the top four twice. That was an event number two and an event number four, the sprint couplet, when she finished 12th. Everything else has been fourth or better. And now the pack behind them. As it looks like James Newbery in the orange paddleboard on the left has passed Noah Olson. Not surprising, another athlete that I believe has some, some surf saving skills from, his, uh, from Australia. The Aussies love the water events. They have typically dominated here whenever we're in the water. And that's not going to change here as Matt McLeod and Tia Toomey, the two Australians coming in together and they are both going to rack up another event win. Second for Matt McLeod, fourth for Tia Toomey. <laughs> and they're going to race each other. It's not even going to matter. But they want to cross the finish line together. And Aussie Pride on display. Tia Toomey and Matt McLeod. I really? mean, win event nine. To me, that looked like it's like somebody needs to compete against me. This right. weekend. <laughs> Could you Here, pick make it me up? feel like I'm in a race. Like, right. yeah. Could you pick it up, Matt? I'd like to run right now. So really? James Newberry in the bottom right is now second place for the men. Behind him is Noah Olson. If Olson finishes in third, that would be 80 points. Now the question is, where's Matt Fraser? Right. Well, for Newberry, too, because if Matt's not careful and he loses four to five spots to Newberry, that's 50 points off the board, and Newberry's 30 points closer to the podium. It ain't over till it's over. That's the lesson that we're going to learn today. Past the 26-minute mark. As Tia Toomey and Matt McLeod made this look like a warm-up event. And, and you look at the times that they did, they had about a 16-minute swim and about an eight, eight and a half minute paddle. So that was the that's a, just showing you the, the major advantage it has in this event to be a good swimmer. James Newbury looks like he will be the next man to finish, followed by Noah Olson. And Newbury employing that paddle from the knee technique that so many Australians have used on this paddleboard. That's there's not no what you want to see right there. Well, that is, that is like I was talking about. All of a sudden, your head weighs about 2,005 pounds. <laughs> I think I just looked over and saw Dan start shivering with bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it looks like we yeah, have we still a, have a another female. woman in the water. Not sure who that is. I, I believe it might be Anna Fragu. She is the one name that we haven't said yet. So here comes James Newberry. He's going to lock up second place in the event. He'll earn 90 points in the overall standings. Newberry coming in in fifth place overall. And he's now looking to challenge for a spot on the podium. Here's Noah Olson. The overall leader after eight events will keep the white jersey and he will earn 80 points. So now the question is, where is Matt Fraser? Huge finish for, for Noah Olson right there. Jordan Carl Gumitson coming in. So he's gonna take fourth. And that's gonna move him in front of Scott Panchik for sure. So Gumanson will stay ahead of Panchik for the race of the podium. Here comes Bjorgman Carl Gumanson, fourth place finish for him. And I believe that was Haley Adams that just came in. Jamie Green. Bethany Shadron is out. Haley Adams finished second. So there's Matt Fraser. And he is getting closer to shore. So if Matt Fraser finishes fifth, that will be 60 points. Noah Olson has already locked up third. 
So Olsen will add 20 points to his lead. And Fraser will now trail him by 35 points after nine events. So Matt Fraser is in. And he will take fifth place in event number nine. That's Kristen Holta. Here comes Saxon Panjic. So Saxon Panjic, Jacob Hepner, Adrian Moonweiler, Will Morad, and then Scott Panjic have yet to finish this event, but Saxon getting in ahead of his older brother. He's going to take sixth. And here comes Kristen Holta, who is trying to do some damage control and keep herself in the top three. And there's Carrie Pierce. As Jamie Green has already finished. And I am just so surprised to see where Barnhart is shaking out in this race. It is a bit of a shock that she has fallen that far back in the pack. Barnhart is actually already finished. She came across when oh. we weren't looking. She, when we didn't have the camera on, she finished fifth in the event. So Amanda Barnhart's already in. So here comes Kristen Holta. She's going to finish sixth place. So Holta is in. So she will surrender 20 points to Jamie Green. She was up by 45. And now here comes Jacob Heppner. <coughs> and it's right off the bat, you see Heppner actually dragging his arms forward. Right? <laughs> so you're trying to reach to swim, except you pull yourself backwards and then, you know, it's. Two it's steps forward, one step back. It's yeah. the old cotton eye show usually, technique. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually what you do when you want to stop. It's like riding a bike and tapping your brakes every time you pedal twice. <laughs> Kerry Pierce getting set to come across the finish line for the women. Jacob Hepner will take seven. Three men left in the water. Scott Panchik, Adrian Moonweiler, and Will Morad still have yet to finish. So Jacob Hepner in at seven. It's Catherine David's daughter we just took a look at, and here comes Kerry Pierce. Now, Pierce, Pierce made up will a finish lot seven. Of time she on did that on the paddleboard. Board. Yeah. There's that upper body pulling. Shoulder stamina for you. Catherine David's daughter and Scott Panchik look to be next to finish. David's daughter looking to lock up eighth place. She will not gain ground on the women in front of her in the overall leaderboard. Tia Toomey, Kristen Holta, Jamie Green, and Pierce have all already finished. David's daughter sits in fifth. But Anna Fragu is way back in the pack, so David Zotter won't surrender any ground to sixth place Fragu. When you look at the paddleboard, you see a lot of these athletes that are so tired and they lay face down. The problem is, is that that actually limits your stroke. Right? Right. When you're a bit more upright, you can reach further yep. into the water. Yep. When you have that, it pushes your hands out to the side. You can't have as good of a pull. Catherine David's daughter is out. Scott Panchik is out. David's daughter is going to sprint to the finish. I believe that's Turi Helga daughter behind her. So David's daughter is in and she will take eighth place. That'll be good for 30 points. And here comes Turi Helga daughter in ninth, which means Fragu will finish in 10th and she will earn 10 points in the overall standings. Looks like that's Will Morad coming in. Yeah, will Morad, one of two men still left in the water. Adrian Moonweiler is the other one. Morad is out of the water and he's going to lock up ninth place easily. So Moonvider will take 10th and Fraga will take 10th. They're the only two athletes left in the water. Morad is not moving fast. He's got a bandage around his leg there, it looks like. Something keeping his left leg tight. Well, we saw that last night when he wouldn't make an attempt at 315, ah, the opening barbell. He kind of grabbed his hamstring a little bit and we speculated as maybe that was what was bothering him after the sprint event. And clearly, that looks to be the case.
That's Adrian Moonweiler. He's the last man left in the water. So to recap, Tia Toomey for the women wins the event. Haley Adams and Bethany Shadburn rounding out the top three. On the men's side, it's Matt McLeod. He gets his second event win. James Newbery takes second. Noah Olson takes third. And Matt Fraser takes fifth. On the women's side, Tia Toomey gets 100 points. Kristen Holta, who sat in second, finishes in sixth place. That is good for 50 points. So Toomey will add 50 points onto her lead over Kristen Holta. The one thing I'm, as I'm watching this event unfold and kind of realizing all the volume of pulling that has happened over the last three days, you had the legless rope climbs, you had the over 300 pull-ups, pegboards, mm -hmm. what your lats go mm -hmm. through on long distance swimming, mm -hmm. I don't think people really truly understand because they think shoulders. And it's right. really, if you just reach underneath your armpit and grab that sucker right there, that gets so unbelievably tight. Yeah and what that is going to do to these athletes moving forward. If they haven't taken care of themselves in between events over the weekend, they might see some repercussions coming in in the next few events. Adrian Moonweiler is getting set to finish up for the men, and that'll do it for their event as he is the last man out of Lake Monona. 10th place finish for him, 10 points in the overall standings. Moonviler is out, and Moonviler will take a stroll across the finish line, and that'll do it for event nine for the men, as Matt McLeod earns his second win of the competition. It's an Aussie sweep. Tia Toomey wins on the other side for the women. It's her fourth event win, and in nine events, Tia Toomey has only finished outside the top four twice. That leaves Anna Fragu, the only woman left in Lake Monona on her paddleboard. It's a 50 minute time cap, so she has plenty of time to get in inside the time cap. And even though she's finishing last, and there's is still pride in finishing inside the time cap. Yeah. With the athletes finishing so fast, some people might wonder why would the time cap perhaps be 50 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And I think some of that goes back to you don't want to cap all the athletes out too early because you're going to make them do all the work, right? right? right. So Tia Toomey, That's a really good point. the yeah. athletes that came in first, second, they, they paddled the whole distance. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the shoulder yep. fatigue. They've done all the reps. This eliminates a way for an athlete to really potentially sandbag an event and mm -hmm. say, I know I'm going to get 10th anyway. I'm going to complete Why would I waste half my energy? of my swim yeah. Right. or right. just slowly paddle through the water. It's like, no, we're going to give you enough time. You should be able to complete this all the way through and do all the reps. There's Noah Olson saying hello to his fans, and he will continue to be the overall leader as he picks up 20 points on Matt Fraser. And now leads him by 35 points. If Jorgen Gumensen, this is all unofficial, sits in third, and he has opened up the lead, opened up the lead on Scott, Scott Padgett Ranger, for yeah. that final spot on the podium. And James Newbery, meanwhile, is, is creeping closer. He is only 17 points back unofficially of Scott Panchik, 60 points back of Jorgen Carl Gubinson. And again, keep in mind, I know we're saying this a lot, those, those deficits can be made up very quickly in this format. Well, yeah, when we're talking about 10-point chunks, all it takes is, is three or four places. Right. Look at the state capitol building here in Madison, Wisconsin. What a beautiful day, huh? About a 75, 76 degrees out there on Lake Monona. Perfect day for a water event. The latest water event that we've ever had at the CrossFit Games taking yep. place on the final day. The most important water event we've ever had at the CrossFit Games. By and far. speaking of which, now the pressure is really on Noel Olson. We don't know how many events remain, but now I mean, he still has the lead. And we talked about the fear of success and how you can deal with success as opposed to failure as Anna Fragu gets out. Noah Olson's going to have to hold off of Matt Fraser, who is just going to be hard charging here. 
I can't wait to watch the next game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the start. It was a, uh, a mass start at first, but yeah, Matt McLeod and Tia Toomey, it, it seemed like five seconds later were 30 yards ahead of everybody else. And this, there you just see the, the, the churning, burning, people getting hit, people getting knocked out, but it's right from the start, end to end with McLeod and Tia Claire Toomey, both athletes. And here I love this at the end. Tia looking over at Matt, it's like, will somebody please, you know, yeah. stay with me push during me, the middle of this, this event? Well, so they, I would argue that Tia was actually a bit more proficient on the paddle board than Matt McLeod was. She was much smoother on the knee paddling, whereas Matt was much better uh, laying down. So the Australian sweep, Matt McLeod for the men and Tia Toomey for the women. Freedom. Two minutes, athletes, two minutes. I have both individual uh, athletes who have won the event here, Tia Kartumi and Matt McLeod. Not only were you guys uh, both the winners, but you had a little bit of a foot race there in the end. And I think Tia came in first and beat the boys. Why, why the sprint in the end? What was going on there? Well, let's just make sure it's clear. Matt reckons he didn't hear me say at the end, hey, we're sprinting at the end. <laughs> But I swear I said that, so <laughs> as soon as we're at the water, boom. <laughs> and, and how did you find the energy? I mean, what was it like coming out of the lake and then hitting the pavement and going going for the sprint there? Uh, well, I mean, obviously we are competitors, but not racing against each other. So we were, when it came to the board lap, we actually helped each other a little bit. Um, he, he drafted off me for a little bit, I drafted off him, and then we kind of realized how far in, ahead we were. And then there was just really no point exerting extra energy. Uh, so we just kind of just, I guess, in a way, slowed it down on the way back. So as soon as we got to the land, we'll, uh, we had a bit of energy. And Matt, let me ask you the same thing, sort of getting to the to the point in the end where you were helping each other out. I mean, what was it like out there up until then? You had the swim and you had the paddle. Um, yeah, the swim was, it was, uh, it was pretty hard on the way out, but sort of got into the rhythm, didn't really get any worse, sort of saw where we were, and then the board was just, just keep moving so they don't catch up, really, yeah. Well, nice job, you guys. Congratulations on the win here this morning. Great work. And we're going to jump right in to the team start. It's event eight for them. It's swim paddle. They will be wearing swim caps that correspond with their placement on the overall leaderboard, same as with the individuals. We're underway, and this one's oh. going to be even more chaos than the last start that we saw. Well, and actually, and you can and you can tell me if you think I'm wrong here, Chase. When there is a little bit more of a mass start like this, I would say it's worth it to actually swing to the side, left or right, mm -hmm. and not go down the middle. The the little extra distance that you might have to buy by going to the side, but the open water, the not taking feet to the face, to me is totally worth it. You know, this is actually, and you're exactly right. It's, it's it's either swing to the side or just let them go. Right. It's a thousand meter swim. It's going to take you and your team a lot longer than the individual because you're based off your weakest link. And what you need to make sure of is that someone needs to be accountable for the weakest swimmer out there on the team. Here's how the event works. It's the same as we just saw with the individuals, but they can, all the team members have to complete this and their team score is the sum of each athlete's time. So it's a, essentially you're going to add up everyone's time and then figure out who won. Here's how you need to strategize with that with your team. If you have someone that's going to kill this event, send them. Mm -hmm. right? Your job is to send them out there and to make up as much time as possible for your weakest link. And with the other ones is that you're going to need to have someone out there accounting for the worst swimmer. Right. And what I, and I said on the individual side is that put your third best athlete in charge of the worst one in terms of the swim because you don't want to lose time with your good swimmers and your good paddle right. boarders and have that person swim for the other person is like, you stay on my feet and you drag off me the entire way of the entire swim. And so when you have a mass start with a bunch of teams is that you don't want to lose 
your teammates while right. you're out there. Racing the first 10 seconds of this race is irrelevant when you talk about the distance of the swim that they have to do. And here are the overall standings coming into the event as we cut down to seven teams. We're going to go down to five here pretty soon as well. So uh, don't stop Invictus and Invictus X. Keep an eye on the race between them because they're fighting for that fifth and final spot. Uh, OC3 Black, the Central Beast, and CrossFit Krypton are battling for a spot on the podium. And Mayhem Freedom is just being Mayhem Freedom. And you know, last year Mayhem Freedom took 16th in the Team Triplets event, so definitely not one of their best finishes. But they also did not have China I was just going to mention that. On their team last year, who is again one of the best female CrossFit swimmers uh, that, that has been in competition in recent years. It's like athletes from Invictus uh, was number six, got the last look that I got here from the CrossFit World Feed that we were able to identify. Uh, but they have the numbers on their caps correspond to their standing on the overall leaderboard. So number one is Mayhem Freedom, two is CrossFit Krypton, three the Central Beasts, four OC3 Black, five Don't Stop, number six is Invictus, and number seven Invictus X. You need about Invictus, it looked like a male athlete out there in front. I can only assume that's Rasmus Anderson yep. out there for Invictus with that swimming background that he's had. And number six, so two, two of the male members, so it's Rasmus Anderson and uh, Tommy Venus for Invictus wearing the red swim caps with the numbers six on them. And then on the far inside, hard to make out what number that is, but there's also an athlete from Invictus X. It looks like that might be Margot Alvarez or Christy, it might be Christy Aramo. Aramo are a pretty strong swimmer, so she could be up there. And then uh, we have an athlete from OC3 Black uh, in the purple swim cap wearing number four. And it looks like that's uh, Dre Strom. Could be out there, Dre Strom number one in the dark blue swim cap who's way on the inside. So all the athletes going at the same time, and again, it's a, that your score is your sum, the sum of every athlete's time. They all swim, they all paddle. Exact same course as we just saw with the individuals. And I look in the background, and I see a lot of heads above water not moving, mm -hmm. right? So a little bit, I mean, you can get a little bit of a panic in open water if you're not used to it, or you just get lost where you yeah. are out in the uh, open water. And that, that's to your point, Chase, where if somebody is that type of swimmer, it's very helpful to have another, another team member next to them and they can sight for them and it's just like, hey, hang on my heels, stay with me. An incredible benefit if you have somebody who's done that before. And interesting enough, we talk about how well CrossFit Mayhem trains and how much they try to replicate the test of the games. They train up in a pond, usually swimming at their dad's pond, and they actually put buoys into the pond you can practice spotting, finding your lane, and knowing where yeah. you need to go. The numbers and the color. So Mayhem Freedom, they'll wear number one in the dark blue, and then it's Cross with Krypton, number two in the green. Uh, Central Beasts have the yellow caps, and then you can figure out how you can identify those athletes based on the number and then the colors that they are wearing on their swim caps. Assuming that's Christy Aramo, she kind of went for a couple of breaststrokes yeah, a breast right there. breaststroke thrown in there. <laughs> That is my least favorite of all strokes. <laughs> and, and a lot of that is just to kind of, yep. as I said before, is that the, the pulling, compounding over the over the over just the course of the swim, yep. throwing in a little breaststroke, you, you usually see some athletes actually flip on their back that have yes. the experience. They'll yes. flip on their back and do a little backstroke. And that's just to stretch yes. the arms, allow you to breathe freely with your face open to the air, right. take a couple breaths and then flip over and get back into the freestyle. Well, and actually the, the breaststroke would be a great way to sight, right? It's much easier to sight because the way your head is oriented during the breaststroke. I tell you what, guys, it's all taxing to me when I'm in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot changes. <laughs> I'm having a stroke stroke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We sell a lot more, a lot more rocks than <laughs> yeah, a lot more rocks and floaties yeah, out there. Yeah, that, that would be that would be me. Chase Dan talked about kind of frothing at the bit yesterday for that sprint event. Are you frothing at the bit for this one? Yeah, this is old slow pitch down the middle for old <laughs> Chase Ingram. That's, uh, yeah. I was seeing on it, I was like, I really wish I could have tested this one yeah. at the games. It's, it's like, why do you keep saying your time out there? This is not even in there. Was it? 2013 or 2014? 2014 when you tested the the swim event, right? I that tested was the pool. run, swim, run, actually. Okay, and you and also tested I, the, the, the pool. And the pool, the, yeah. uh, me, actually me and Annie 
right, tested you both the got arm. I saw yeah. one. And I'm going to say is that we had the harder job to do because they didn't wipe down our pull-up bars okay. or retape them. That right. is why I didn't have the best time right. relative to the mm -hmm. field. We had, we had sopping wet pull-up bars. <laughs> Stop complaining. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe you just weren't as fit. Yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> Jordan Troyan was pretty good that year. He not yes. bad. So it looks like Invictus X, OC3, OC3 and then Mayhem are your teams out front. Now that's big uh, for Invictus X because yep. they're one of the teams that are on the bubble. But again, this is the sum of your team's time. So just because you have one guy out front. I love that. Yeah. I love that for an event like this because, you know, I think Goodness, we don't have the rescue sled out there again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be right. brutal, more brutal to watch than it would be to <laughs> do. But having, you know, we say weakest link all the time. It's like, let's just see how your team does. Right. right? If you do collective weight totals, you don't say the worst lift is your team score. Right. right. right? So for something like this with a swim and a paddle, I love the fact that you can have an impact on your team if you're good at this, just like you would have the impact in a total lift. Right. Actually, it looks like Rich Froning might be in the lead for Mayhem rather than Dre Strong. And Rich Froning, we, we got to talk to him leading up to this event. And he was saying how much he's worked on swimming. He thinks back to that pool event uh, in 2014. Yeah, there's two moments that stick yeah, well, out of my <laughs> mind where all of a sudden it looked like Rich Froning had a giant chink in his armor. One right. was. Uh, some running in 2011. I saw him struggle a little bit on the beach event, and then again in a, uh, a longer running event. But also the first time we jumped in the pool, your hips ideally don't want to be sunk to the bottom <laughs> while you're swimming. And we had some underwater cameras there, and he was not a strong sim swimmer at that point. And since then, it's been a three-day-a-week thing for him. And now he's one of the strongest swimmers in the team field, and arguably on his last individual competition was one of the strongest swimmers in the field there and as well. And he is the man out front here. So it's Froning uh, and Mayhem Freedom, Invictus X, and OC3. And uh, then it looks like Invictus in the red behind them. So those are the top athletes right now. Here's what I need to know as we're looking at the field is that we're like, oh, Rich is leading. I'm like, why is it Rich? Why isn't it? China. China, mm -hmm. right? And I think, and I can't see, Tasia is not a good swimmer. Uh -huh. Tasia doesn't like swimming very much. And they practice in a little pond where they can touch the bottom and see all around them. Is that this is a thousand meter open yep. water swim. So she might, China might, be in charge of taking care of Tasia out there on the on the course. I'm not sure, that's just what I'm assuming. And much different if you were to panic out here. Something you know catches your mind in a, in a different way, like you mentioned in the pond, my feet can go down, I know I'm safe. Here, the consequences are huge. You grab one of those paddle boards. I'm not sure what the rule is right now on this event, but typically, if you hold onto that paddle board, it eliminates you from the competition. Across it, Krypton in the green. It's like Cody Mooney. Cody yeah. Mooney. Yeah. And then behind him in the green is uh, one of his teammates. Saw Dre Strom. Mm -hmm. in the dark blue cap behind him. So Tasia and China are out there somewhere. <laughs> and, but, but that's, and I said at the beginning, you need to do that. Yes. You have yeah. to do that. You have to do it for your weakest swimmer. One, just for safety. Well, and and look, the other one is to help them out. This event is not crucial for them. They're fine. I, yeah, they're they're going right. to stay in the right. lead regardless they, of what happens. They just need to stay alive. Right. No need to take risks for Mayhem Freedom as they are solidly in the lead coming into this event. 635 points to sit atop the overall leaderboard, 157 points up on CrossFit Krypton. I mean, this is one of those where you're like, yes, you, you get last in very little points, right? but you have you're such okay. A cushion. You're okay. So let's get through this event best we can and send your horses out to drop the time, total time for your team. And this is just a a testament to Rich Froney's athletic prowess. So you mentioned Dan just it wasn't that long ago he was terrible at this. Now he's, I mean, look at it. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious that he's put the work in still over all the years, finding ways that he can improve his overall fitness. Swimming was one of them. He attacks weaknesses like no other, similar to 2011. He failed a rope climb, which pretty much cost him the games, and he comes back in 2012, one of the best rope climbers ever. Same thing we're seeing here with swimming. 
Rich Froning in the lead for CrossFit Mayhem. As again, you're, the time isn't determined by your slowest athlete. It's cumulative time. You take the times of all four of your athletes, you add them together, and that will determine who wins event eight here for the teams as they kick off their final day of competition. And remember, we are cutting down to five teams. And three teams on that bubble are Don't Stop Invictus and Invictus X. We've seen athletes from Invictus and Invictus X. I'm not sure we've seen anybody from Don't Stop yet. Don't Stop is going to be in the royal blue caps. We'll watch for those. And we do cut down to five teams after this event. So that's a crucial race between those three. I think that's Christy Aramo. It does look like Christy Aramo in the orange. And is that Rich Froning next to her? So Aramo's been able to make up some ground. Here's some more impressive. Like Christy has a nice long stroke. Her feet are coming a little too high out of the water, right? You're, if your foot exits the water, it no longer has any impact on the water. So I'll say keep those feet a little shallow. But Rich has a very short right stroke. It almost mm -hmm. comes right in front of his face. You saw a lot like Tia Claire Toomey did. And though above water, it's not the prettiest swim, but again, what Rich is doing underneath, right? He has good technique, good pulls, and we have the strength and stamina. As long as you put your arms in good positions to have a good stroke, you don't have to have the prettiest one above water. Aramo for Invictus X and Froning for Mayhem Freedom are out front. Froning will head to the shore and then he'll pick up his paddle and navigate his way around the same 1,000 meter circuit. And you know, we're watching across the board as you know, we saw Tia and Matt McLeod head to head and having fun racing each other, but when we're talking about the team competition, right. Right, this is all impactful. It's right. not, it's like, oh, well, that's a female team member, I don't have to worry about her. It's like, no, 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 if she beats you, that's time for her team that she's taking away yep. from yours. So it impacts everyone across the board. About 14 minutes, 30 seconds gone by here in the opening event for the day for the teams. At the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games, we're out in Lake Monona again, as we have been every year since we have moved to Madison, Wisconsin. It's event number eight. We don't know how many events remain for the teams, but we do know one crucial thing about the competition, that we are cutting down to five teams for the rest of the day after this event. So two more teams will be cut from the field. That's actually a very big deal, not in terms of teams lost and teams going forward, but when you look at the point scale on the team side when there's just five, like a first and third is a 50 point difference. Yes. Big chunks of points can be made up very quickly. I mean, we don't know how many events and so we have. Let, let me let me let me reel myself back in a little <laughs> bit. Okay. <laughs> When I said it's like, oh, if Mayhem gets last, no big deal. You sacrifice 90 points of your 100,000 that you have. If you sacrifice anywhere north of, say, 70 to 80 to this field, mm -hmm. I don't know how the back ones are doing. When you're talking about point drops of 20 to 25, you get a third to third in the end of the day, you can actually lose this event. Right. right. So this is actually a, a, a more crucial event for Cross and Mayhem than we started with talking about, right? They, they don't have an opportunity to lose too much here. I don't think they're going to struggle when we get in the Coliseum, but anything can happen. But you don't want to put yourself in that position if you don't have to. Correct. So this isn't a cruise event for Cross and Mayhem. Not a cruise, but also not you got to win if you're going to stay alive. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. not you finish in the top five, I think they're pretty you're, good. Or yeah, if you finish okay. in the top three of this field, you're going to be just fine. Like you mentioned, we don't know what's going to come out in the Coliseum, and we saw how devastating those sprint events can be when you're talking about one second, mm -hmm. two second, tenths of a second. If some kind of quick race comes out in the end, it might just be come down to slipping your chip timer across the line, something like that. So 
While they can get a third, probably still want to try to rack up all those firsts, which they've done all weekend. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the teams have never seen the prone pop aboard, correct? That is true, correct. yes, I think they have correct. never yeah. used that. Right, yes. so now Rich could be at a slight advantage because he has, as an individual, paddled. He did not he paddle did in not 2015. Pass. No, that was his first year team. Was that was the Got rescue it. sled they used that, that year. Correct. Right? Yeah. So this, you know, I, I would like to see what happens once we get to this paddle board because that's an implement that as a team, you may not have been training with you. Axle bar, yes. Uh, the worm, yes. But whereas Christy Aramo has paddled. So it's Aramo out first for Invictus X. Froning follows her for Mayhem. They will now pick up their paddle boards and get back in the water for 1,000 more meters. That looks like Andrea Nistler for OC3 and Tommy Venus, Tommy Venus. for Invictus. Aramo's on her paddle. And here comes Rich Froney. He'll be on that yellow paddle board. Approaching the 18 minute mark here of this event. Two more athletes getting set to come out of the water. And it looks like that might be another Mayhem Freedom athlete. And these Nistler and Venus on their paddle boards. Nistler on the orange and Venus is on the blue for OC3 uh, and Invictus, respectively. There's so that's China, China Cho. Yeah. The China Cho will be second out there we for go. Mayhem. That's what we wanted to see. Two. First team with two athletes over the line for the well, swim. Here comes Rasmus Anderson. So now we have two athletes out of the water for uh, Invictus. That's big for them because, again, they are one of those teams on the bubble right now as far as the cuts are concerned. They're on the wrong side of the cut line. Two points back at Don't Stop. And we have yet to see any athlete from Don't Stop get out of the water. So this is big for Invictus. Essentially, whoever finishes first between Don't Stop, Invictus, and Invictus X is going to make the cut. Yep. There goes China off on the paddle board, and Rasmus right behind her on that bright green yellow paddle board. Whoop! A <laughs> slip there. <laughs> I have not been able to get on one of those things in the water, but just holding it and moving it around, you can tell that there's it's really hard to keep that thing balanced. That's your leader. As far as the woman who is out front, that's Christy Aramo. Rich Froning is behind her. They were the first two out of the water. So Aramo representing Invictus X, Froning representing Mayhem Freedom, and now Andrea Nistler for OC3 on the right in the pink swim cap. I can see on Rich's feet are kind of dragging in the water there a little bit in the back. Uh, maybe he hasn't had experience with this. That's something where definitely you want to bring your feet in together or pull them up out of the water. You don't want anything dragging back there, slowing down your progress through the water. Right, but again, I think they use their feet to try to, to try to balance a little bit. But like you said, Dan, what that ends up doing is creating drag against what you're doing up front, which is the paddle. Christy Armo taking a look behind her. And again, we want to thank our media partners, CrossFit, for providing us with this world feed that we can bring to you here on the Rogue Iron Game. Sean Woodland, Annie Sakamoto, Dan Bailey, and Chase Ingram with you throughout the day. That looks like... Don't stop. I think that might be Cody Mooney. Cody Mooney out for Krypton. Oh. And here comes Dre Strom. So that means for three. For Mayhem Freedom. So three of their four athletes, athletes are out of the water and now onto the paddle. And now another athlete for Krypton in the green. Two more of their athletes getting set to come out. And that is Camille LeBlanc Bazinet, the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games individual champion. So Bazinet and Mooney are out of the water, which leads Griffith and Alex Smith in for CrossFit Krypton. But it's Mayhem Freedom who have the most athletes out of the water and onto the paddle. The only one who is not out is Taser Persevich. 1,000 meter paddle is the second half of this event. And once again, it is not when your last athlete crosses the finish line. Your score is the sum of all your athletes' times. 
Chris Yermo still way out front for Invictus X. But a pair of Invictus athletes have already gotten in the water on their paddle. Right now, she is the only athlete we have seen come out of the water for Invictus X. Now she makes the turn at the halfway point of this 1,000 meter paddle. That's another part is that different on the individual side when you have a stretched field of 10. When your time is collective across this, you, you can't have the benefit that McLeod and Tia did is that make the turn, look back and go, oh, yeah. You want to get a little sun on the way back into the <laughs> depths? Like, Ermo needs to We're really the... dig down because the, the fastest people can have a massive impact on the total team side. It, it seems pretty obvious to say, but you got to hope that they don't have anyone totally dragging back the whole, the whole part of the team. So there's really no letting up for the team side of this event. And she's take, she's opened up a big lead on Rich Froning, and even Andrea Nissler here from OC3 Black has overtaken Rich Froning as they round the buoy and start heading back in. It's hard to tell if that's Taylor Williamson or Andrea Nissler, but it is one of the two athletes yep. from OC3, two female athletes from OC3. They're in good shape. Now here comes China Cho, who's gaining ground on Rich Froning. In a big way. That, was, that didn't take very long. <laughs> no. So Cho has made the turn. Chase, is there any scenario where teammates can kind of work together here and, and, and sort of? Oh, you know, heck yeah. I mean, you're talking about drafting in a big way. is like you're going to have that. Or forcing other teams to have to take a longer route around them, something like that. For the buoys? Just oh, for just the in pass. general. Yes. I would if it was a total team time mm -hmm. in terms of all four finishing in that department, right? So if you have your two fastest ones and you want to mess around with the people behind you to slow down the entire team, yes. When it's a total team time, all you're really doing is hurting your own time right. relative to the rest of the field. So that the way this is structured, you just want to send everybody out as fast as you can and get done as soon as possible. Froning and Cho look like they're having a quick conversation and China's just going to keep putting the pedal to the metal. Wait, Rich looks like he's really far back on that paddleboard. I board. was just going to say he really needs to scoot up on the paddleboard. China may have told him that. It looks like he may have tried to move himself up on it, but when you look at what China is doing on the right and Rich is doing on the left, Rich is way far back on that paddleboard. Yeah, you almost can fell see off the, there. You can see the tail of his paddleboard keeps almost kind of going underwater right there. It's not going to be efficient. And, and that's another reason why you see his feet dragging in the water. You sit that far back, that tail end is going to be dipping into the water. It's hard to keep your feet up. Right. And if you're not balanced, it's not just balanced laterally along the board, it's in the middle of the board right. as well. Mm -hmm. So the board's rocking back and forth and side to side. It's going to throw you off. Froning just doing all he can to keep forward momentum. OC3. I believe that's Andrea Nissler is in the lead uh, for her team. So three of her athletes behind, but she is. Trying to attack around Christy Aramo, who just left you on the left of your screen. So she's going to be the first athlete to complete this entire 2,000 meter circuit. Potentially, China Cho's getting a little bit closer. I guess we can't tell quite from the angle right now, but she's been eating up that lead little by little. On OC3 block. Correct. <laughs> I think Rich Froning <laughs> understands it. It's Maybe like, he yeah. needs to work on this a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got me. Yeah. <laughs> there are uh, rucks and paddle boards on order <laughs> for CrossFit Mayhem. Christy Aramo is going to be first out for Invictus X. So will hand off a paddleboard and then sprint across the finish line. Looks like the hardest part of the whole event for her is just getting the <laughs> paddleboard out of the water. So Aramo is in. We've seen her do very well as an individual at this setting. So her time, 26.15.51 seconds. Twenty-six minutes, 15.51 seconds. Once again, the time, 
for Christy Aramo, the first woman to complete this circuit. And it actually looked like there was a yellow cap, which would be the central beast uh, of one of their swimmers. So still swimming, not yet on the paddleboard. Yep, central beasts, they're in third. But Invictus X, or Invictus in, in sixth, only 40 points back of them. The it's, central beasts, you know, they're certainly not safe here either. No. Interestingly enough, Christy Ermo's time on that would have actually taken second in the individual competition. That's impressive. Yeah, impressive, but definitely not surprising when we look at the event that we're talking about. This will be a little race to the finish here. So Andrea Nistler is out for OC3, and here comes China Show, but she'll get across the finish line first. Cho will be second, so three athletes in. OC3 Black's first time, 27 minutes, 28.31 seconds. Mayhem Freedom's first time courtesy of China Cho, 27 minutes, 30.49 seconds. Now here comes Rich Froning. He will be the second athlete from Mayhem Freedom to finish up. Froning is out of the water, and I'm surprised he just doesn't chuck that thing about 50 <laughs> yards into the forest. Got to be glad to be rid of it. Yeah. Froning is done. So great time for Rich Froning, the first man across the finish line for the teams. His time, 28 minutes, 12.38 seconds. Four athletes have finished, two of them from Mayhem Freedom. And now, an athlete from, looks like Rasmus Anderson from Invictus. And he and Tommy Venus were pretty close together. I say that, it's Tommy Venus right behind him. So that's big for Invictus. They're on the wrong side of the cut line coming in. Sixth place overall, just two points back at Don't Stop for fifth. There is Tommy Venus, and in, in, you're right, Annie. I think there was still uh, a Central B swim cap out yep. in the water on the last shot. You can kind of see it on the left side of the screen. Rasmus Anderson is done. Anderson will hand off his paddleboard, and he will head across the finish line. So the first athlete for Invictus is in, the second close behind. So Anderson, he comes in. with a time of 29 minutes, 26.49 seconds. And here comes Tommy Venus. Two athletes have finished for Mayhem Freedom. Two athletes have finished for Invictus. Venus across in 29 minutes, 41.12 seconds. And here is Cody Mooney, the first athlete for CrossFit Krypton. Second place overall, but 157 points back of Mayhem Freedom in the overall standings. Wow. Is Tatora for uh, Central Joseph Beast. Tatora for the Central Beast still on the, still in the water. water. Here comes Cody Mooney. So Mooney is out. And he will be the first athlete from CrossFit Krypton to come across the finish line. Mooney in at 30 minutes, 33.60 seconds. And now Lauren Fisher. Fisher forgets that she has to grab her paddleboard. That's huge. So she's out. Now here comes Camila Blanc Bazinet. So Fisher is in. So Invictus. That's three athletes for Invictus. Three of their four Huge. athletes. They are looking good as far as making the final cut down to five. We have two in for CrossFit Krypton as Camila Blanc Bazinet is in at 31 minutes, 5.25 seconds. And now Joseph Tortora for Central Beast is finishing up his swim. Here comes Alex Smith. He would be the third athlete from CrossFit Krypton across the finish line. Tortora from the Central Beast is is on the left. Look, and they then Dre were, Strong, Strong. Man, looks like coming in. So another team with three athletes in and CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. 
So Mayhem Freedom with their third athlete across. Back to, back to Tortora for a second. Just kissed the sky, <laughs> thanking God that he made it to well, the swim. Well, the, here's the problem for them. They're third place exactly. overall. They are way back, and they are not safe as far as the cut is concerned. So they could very quickly be on the outside looking in. Especially as Alex when you Smith look at, gets out of the water. Especially when you look at how Invictus and Invictus X right. are doing. So here comes Alex Smith to CrossFit Krypton now. Yep, three yep. of their four athletes across. So three teams have three athletes in. Mayhem Freedom, Invictus, and CrossFit Krypton. And that is Margot Alvarez for Invictus X. She would be the second athlete from her team across. Now the only thing that, that Central Bees have going for them is we've yet to see any athletes from Don't Stop come in. Three teams with three athletes. And there are two teams with one athlete. That's Invictus X and OC3 Black. And Margot Alvarez will be second for Invictus X. Great job from the ladies of Invictus X. They are another team that's fighting to get in to that final five. I believe Don't stop. This. Alexis Johnson is the first athlete out. And next to her is Roy Gamboa. So two of their athletes getting out at the same time. And Jen Smith for CrossFit Krypton. Or make that, I'm sorry, that is, looks like Nicole Holcomb possibly for the Central Beast. Yep. There's, there's, there's Jen, Jen Smith. Smith. Yeah, there's Jen Smith for Don't Stop. Don't Stop. And it looks like uh, one like of the that. male athletes. Don't Stop's going to have three. Yep. But Jessica Griffith is the only athlete still in the water for CrossFit Krypton. And we have our first male athlete from CrossFit OC3. It's like Luke Schaefer. Race to the finish here. So race to the finish. Again, it's your cumulative time. Schaefer's going to win that race. And Jen Smith now gets across for Don't Stop. So that's big for Don't Stop. And now they're about ready to get another athlete across. Travis Williams. So Travis Williams coming in. So all of a and sudden, that would be the entire team. Don't stop! The is going to get their team. whole team across the finish line. Travis Williams, wow. man, he needs to hurry up and understand what's going on here because <laughs> his team is trying to hold on to a spot in the top five. So don't stop. We'll have all four of their athletes across. Now that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win the event, right? Because it's the total time of all four of your athletes. And there's a huge pack coming in right here. It looks like we have a, a couple from OC3 Black. So that's Taylor Williamson for OC3 Black. They have two athletes across. They're about to have four. As Joe Persanti was in the background there, Williamson's across the finish line. Three of their four athletes are in. And now we have a mad dash as Persanti is in. It's like Jessica, Jessica Griffith. Griffith. Yeah, Griffith across. Nicole, Nicole that's Holcomb. Nicole Holcomb from the Central Beasts. Here's Sam Dancer. The CrossFit Krypton gets all four of their athletes in. As they look to stay in second place overall. And here comes Sam Dancer for Invictus X. Just throttling the water on the way in. <laughs> Man, no technique, but no. all effort. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> a shot and shot. <laughs> And Sam Dancer just trying to get himself across the finish line as quickly as he can as we approach the 36 minute mark. I'm surprised he doesn't just hang on to the back and kick it in. Yeah. Here comes Sam Dancer, so Invictus X. Three of their we'll four athletes in. The majority of their team in. Reagan Huckabee. Reagan Huckabee out there for Invictus. And this is why I love the scoring 
for this particular mm -hmm. event in terms of what determines first place? Because yes, all of your teammates finished first, but not all of them had the best performances in a total. So this makes it a lot more interesting from a team's perspective. Right. Well, and then when, when you look at the Central Beast, they already have a couple athletes across, and they're the team right now that is probably the most trouble because Joseph Tortora it's was getting so out of the water behind. on the swim while other teams were sending athletes across the finish line. Yep. That's Zach Souter for the Central Beasts. He would be their third athlete across the finish line. And that's what I was talking about, you guys. It, it sounds funny, but just holding your head up, the strain it puts on your neck and shoulders is so tiring. Let's also show the fatigue that compiles throughout this event after the swim and onto the paddleboard is how he can even pick his hands up out of the water. You're talking like some of the strongest people here yep. at the CrossFit Games can't even lift their hands three inches off the side of their boards. The Central Beast came in in third place overall. But they were only 40 points up on Invictus in sixth place. You can make that up really fast here. There's only seven teams in the field. The difference between every spot is 16 points. Oh. So really the only leaderboard that's going to matter is the final one. I mean, we know it's a Taurus last. So Central Beast, we're waiting on, but he makes a turn. It, uh, where's Tasia Persephone? That's a good point. All right. Very good point. And we have not seen Tasia Persephone. You assume that she's out there on the paddle because it doesn't look like any athletes are still out there swimming. And that may be her in the green that we just saw as. No wake zone. Zach Souter. No problem. No, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna follow that rule to a T. Probably the funniest sign we've seen so far <laughs> across the game. Slow. Zach Souter is going to join Nicole Holkman, Holcomb and Emma Chapman as three athletes from the Central Beast to cross the finish line. You know, and I think on depending on when Tasia finishes, now you're trying to look at, okay, how is Krypton's actual total time? Right. right. I think it was actually pretty good I do too. in terms of all of it. They're close with Don't Stop and Invictus a little mm -hmm. bit. Zach Souter's out. Three quarters of the Central Beast team now across the finish line. So vet number eight here at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games, and we are cutting down to five teams. Now, here comes Tasia Persevich. Tasia Persevich, the final athlete out of the water for Mayhem Freedom. Not really concerning for them, as they got three athletes across pretty quickly, and they had a giant lead over CrossFit Krypton coming in. 157 points for the top spot on the leaderboard, so Persevich gets in. And being congratulated by her team. So this means Mayhem will win the swim paddle event next year. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see them all on their knees flying through the water at 100 miles an hour. Right. It's like Holden Rethel? That's Holden yeah. Rethel from Invictus X. Wow. So he's the only athlete left in the water for his team. Taking a little breather. Definitely see the paddleboard just moving side to side there, trying to grab his balance. Somebody could put a motor on this thing. I'd get in a little quicker. <laughs> Christy Aramo, to put this in perspective, finished 15 minutes ago. 26, 15, 51. That was the fastest time from anybody. And she's on Holden's team. And depending on how That's the total help. time shakes out, the value of having someone who can be so incredibly fast on this event.
Holden Westwood looks like he is just out of gas here. He's taking a, a, a couple strokes and then resting with his hands and just trying to glide on yeah. in. Holden will be the last member of his team across the finish line for Invictus X. And again, they're on the wrong side of the cut line coming into this event. They were in seventh place overall. But not by much. Just three points. Three points separating fifth from seventh on the overall leaderboard. Sam Dancer, Christy Aramel, and Margot Alvarez trying to get him across the finish line. Rethwell is done. And Invictus X, they are in. About 42.55 unofficially for Holden Rethwell. Here comes Joseph Tortora for the Central Beasts. It was Chrissy Aramo with the fastest time out of any athlete. 26 minutes, 15.51 seconds, and that time would have been good enough for second place in the women's competition. So she really does her team a favor as they try to avoid the cut line and get into the final five teams. Again, we are cutting down once again after this event, and then we'll have five teams for the remainder of the competition. Joseph Tortora will be the last athlete out for the team competition, and then it's time to do some math. <laughs> Add up all four team members' times, the team with the fastest total time will win the event. So here comes Tortora to close out event number eight for the teams. And that'll do it, and now, Teams like Don't Stop Invictus, Invictus X, Central Beasts. We're going to have some nervous moments here, but yep. mass start at the beginning. Uh, and we really saw, as we always do, the good swimmers separate themselves and then be able to hold on on the paddle. Board. And we said this a lot during the event, is how vital it is when you have a total time structured event like this, is that you send your best athletes out as far as you can. You see China Cho trying to give Rich a little advice off the side and you know that look from Rich is like yeah yeah I know <laughs> it's, it's, it's not good it's not good but Chrissy Aramo one of the ones that has been going head to head with Tia over the last few years taking it for that team Now we'll still have to wait and see exactly how the scores shake out because it's cumulative time amongst all of the athletes on the team that will determine the placings in this event. But Christy, you were the first swimmer out of the water. And so just kind of take me through what it was like in the lake and then coming back in and grabbing the, the paddleboard and having to go back in. Uh, it was long. Uh, so the whole time I just knew like it's very easy to lose it on the swim. So I just kind of tried to pick and go right behind somebody and just kind of try to slow myself down and just breathe and glide. And then I turned the, the little thing and Rich is in front of me and I was like, what the heck? So then I like started to paddle because I wanted to be first out of the water because I thought the guys would paddle faster. So I was trying to build as much lead into it as I could because I knew uh, cumulative time, every second counts. That strategy obviously paid off for you. Your time was actually second only to Tia Claire Toomey who came in first for the individual ladies. And what's funny because last year you guys were one and two out of the water as well on that event. How does your uh, sort of veteran status here and with the swim events and at games helping you out so far? I think it just helps you stay calm. Uh, you just realize like, hey, I want to keep my heart rate down. I want to run my own race and not worry about anybody else. And I think that's what you learn year after year. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Christy Aramo with a time that would have been good enough for second place in the individual women's competition. As we wrap up our water events at the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games to kick off day number four of competition, the latest that we have ever had, the water event 
at the CrossFit Games. But once again, we want to thank our media partners, CrossFit, for providing us with the world feed that we can bring to you here on the Rogue Iron Game. Competition now moves back to the Alliant Energy Center for the remainder of the day. For the team competition, one cut remains, and they will go from seven now down to five. The individuals, their fields will remain at 10 athletes. Back to the men. It was Matt McLeod, he and James Dubery leading the way as the Aussies once again do well in the water. Noah Olsen finishes third, and he picks up 20 points on Matt Fraser and now leads him by 35 points through nine events. Here are your overall standings. So it's Olsen at 729, followed by Matt Fraser. Bjorben Carl Gumanson sits in third. But Scott Pants, James Newbury, and now Matt McLeod, very much within striking distance of a spot within the top three. On the women's side of things, Tia Toomey wins for the fourth time beating Haley Adams by more than three minutes. Bethany Shadburn will take third. Jamie Green moves up to fourth. What that means for the overall leaderboard is that Tia Toomey's lead over Kristen Holta has gotten even bigger. 821 total points for Toomey. She's 135 up on Holta. Jamie Green is 25 points back at Kristen Holta for second. And Carrie Pierce sits in fourth and former two-time champion Catherine Davis daughter is in fifth but anything can happen and these leaderboards can change up very quickly as we head back to the Alliant Energy Center for the remainder of the competition of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. So we're going to take a break we will be back with you at 1245 local time here 1240 pardon me local time here in Madison Wisconsin to continue the Rogue Iron Game and our coverage of the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games.